Welcome back everyone to our first example for area inside polar with integrals. We want to find the area inside of r equals 3 plus 3 cosine theta. I've got my area formula here. So here's our graph of this. It's a cardioid. It is symmetric along the x-axis here if you think of x and y. And the way I'm going to find the area, I'm just going to go ahead and look at finding the area of the top half and then I will multiply by 2. So if I think about my alpha being over here and my beta being over here, integral from alpha to beta, then I'm going to fill the sectors between those moving counterclockwise on the graph. So here this will be my alpha over here and this will be my beta over here at the pole. Now we want to figure out what those are once we plug into our formula here. So our area is going to equal one half the integral from alpha to beta, we'll come back and do that. Now my function squared, so r squared, is going to be 3 plus 3 cosine theta, all squared, d theta. And finding my bounds, um, it's very likely because we are straight to the right here from the pole that this is an angle of zero. And we could check that. Notice we are, it looks like, six units out from the pole. So we could check and make sure at an angle of zero, do we get r equals six? So think about plugging in zero here for theta. We would have three plus three times cosine of zero. Cosine of zero is one, right? So that would give us three times one. We'd have three plus three, which is six. So this is definitely zero out here. So we get an alpha value of zero. Beta value, you can tell beta is where we are at the pole. Beta is going to be when r is equal to zero. So if I want to find beta, I could certainly set this equal to zero and solve. Let's go ahead and do that. So if I say zero is equal to three plus three cosine theta, and I solve this for theta, let's go ahead and subtract three. So we'll get negative three is equal to three cosine theta. We'll divide by threes, so we'll get negative one is equal to cosine of theta. And where does that happen the first time on the unit circle? Well, it happens at theta is pi, right? So here, theta is going to equal pi. That tells us that our beta is pi. We'll be integrating from zero to pi. And now that will give me just the upper half here. Remember, I want to multiply by two to also get the area of the lower half. So we'll take two, and multiply everything by two. Now here, the two will get rid of the one half, right? So let's go ahead and write this down. We'll have the area equals the integral. Let's go ahead and distribute this. So I would get three times three. I'd get three times three cosine theta, which is nine cosine theta, plus another one of those when I distribute. So I'd get 18 cosine of theta. And then this last thing squared, we would get nine cosine squared theta. Okay, all of these are easily integrated. Uh, this last term with a cosine square, we might want to reduce the power there. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna use a double angle formula here. So we'll say from zero to pi, and we'll have nine plus 18 cosine theta will stay. And then here, I'm going to actually have plus nine times one plus cosine two theta over two from your trig integrals. If you remember integrating an even power of sine or cosine, you'll need to use double angle formula there. Okay, we want to be careful. You cannot bump the two out as a one half in front. You would have to factor it out of every term. You can do that, but you cannot just factor out of one term and put it out front. So we cannot just move the one half to the front. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it in here. So I will have nine plus 18 cosine of theta, and then splitting this up, 1 half times 9, I would have 9 halves, plus I would also have cosine 2 theta over 2 times 9, so that would be 9 halves cosine 2 theta. And I could go ahead and combine my 9 and my 9 halves if I want. I'm just going to go ahead and integrate right now. Let's just go ahead and do this. So my area is going to equal integrating d theta, so 9 d theta would give me 9 theta, and then integrating 18 cosine theta, integral of cosine theta is sine theta, so we would get plus 18 sine theta. Here integral 9 halves would be 9 halves theta, 
plus, and then here we have the integral of cosine two theta. Remember, since we're taking the antiderivative, the reciprocal of two will come out, we'll get a half that comes out. So I actually get nine over four sine of two theta. And if you're not sure, then you could certainly do that by u substitution, that last one if you needed to. Evaluating from zero to pi. Okay, let's go ahead and plug in. So we'll get, then plugging in pi, we'll get nine pi plus 18 sine of pi, sine of pi is zero, so this is zero, plus nine halves pi, plus nine fourths times sine of two theta. If I plug in pi, that would be two pi, and sine of two pi is zero, so this would also be zero. And if I plug in zero, I will get zero here, I'll get zero for my sine of zero, and I'll also get zero for these. So we get zero for all of the terms when we plug in the second bound. So we get nine pi plus nine halves pi, also known as 18 over two pi plus nine halves pi. And if we add those together, we'll get 27 pi over two for our area inside of this cardioid. Okay, thanks for watching everybody. We have another couple example videos. Check those out. We'll see you then.